In today's cultural and political climate, is it even possible to break away from media, not just social media, but all media? Is it smart? Does it have benefits? And even if you were to try it, how would you do it? I experimented with this for 17 days. I took a complete total media fast. I stepped away from everything. And I wanna tell you all about how I did it, why I did it, and what I learned in the process. For that, stick around. My name's Lane Sebring. Welcome to my channel. It's so awesome to have you with me today. I talk on this channel about personal development, online business, and self-publishing. If you're interested in those topics, be sure to give this video a like and be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like that. Now, before I get into this, for some of you, this is going to be controversial. And the reason why it's gonna be controversial has to do with the fact that you might feel like a absolute and complete knowledge of everything going on is what it takes to be a productive citizen. That if you don't know all the latest headlines every single day, then somehow you're failing as a citizen. You're failing your duty as a productive member of society. And I can appreciate that perspective to a certain degree. In fact, let me give you a little bit of a background. I am a political and news junkie. I don't talk about it on my channels because I don't want these to be about politics, but I really enjoy the art and the theater of the political science <laughs> is. <laughs> I really love to just see how all these things unfold and what's current and what people are arguing about and what's, what are the issues. I love all that. And so as a result, over the last several months, with all that's gone on, I have just been immersed in everything that's happening. And so from the push notifications on my phone to social media scrolling, to my podcast that I'm subscribed to, to the conversations I have with friends and family, it's all news all the time. And I reached a point in mid-August where I started to realize that I was so engulfed in these kinds of thoughts and this kind of information that I was lacking in other areas of my life. I, I wasn't as productive as I needed to be with my business. And I'm an entrepreneur full time, which means I don't have a guaranteed paycheck every 15 days, no matter what, right? Uh, those days are gone for me. So I have to show up every day and I have to produce and I have to build something that's going to become an asset that produces me income over time. And if I don't do that with consistency every day, then I'm going to suffer and so is my family. But what I found is that I had this unbelievably cluttered mind. I was unproductive and I was unmotivated. And I started to realize that a lot of it went back to the media that I was constantly consuming, what I was constantly putting in my brain. So I decided, I'm like, you know what, as important as it is to be up on all that's going on and to understand what's happening and why it's happening and how important everything is, I needed to step back and maybe you need to do the same thing as well, or maybe you're interested. So I want to talk about the specific challenges that I was facing that led to this decision. The first challenge was negativity. I had been so exposed for so long to just nothing but bad news. On my phone, a push notification comes through, bad news. You get on social media and you start scrolling. What is it? It's bad news, right? Everything is just bad all the time. You listen to your favorite podcast. What are they talking about? Bad news, right? Everything is negative and everything is bad. And if you take that in all the time, guess what? Your thoughts start to become negative. At least this was my experience. The second challenge that I faced, and I mentioned this before, but utter and complete unproductivity because I wasn't inspired. I'm the kind of person that I want to listen to and watch and engage with inspiring content and be around inspiring people so that I'm motivated to take action on the things that are going to move the needle forward for me in my business and in my life. But if I'm only and always exposed to things that are negative, well then guess what? I remain in a state of being uninspired, which is not good, again, because I have to keep moving. That's one of the reasons why I started this channel because I wanted to be able to inspire others as well. And then the third challenge that I was facing was just a cluttered mind. 
My mind was so full of the day's news, the day's problems, the day's events, that it was hard for me to even remember, okay, what am I supposed to be doing to move my business forward, to live my mission, to fulfill my God-given calling on the earth when I can't even think clearly because I'm so full of whatever political debate or argument that I'm engulfed in in that moment. So between negativity, unproductivity, and a cluttered mind, I knew that something had to change. This might get a little bit vulnerable and uncomfortable, honestly, but I'll throw in a fourth, and that is honestly a feeling of helplessness. I mean, just looking at all the world's problems and everything going on and realizing that no matter how informed I am and no matter how passionate I am about certain topics, there's a feeling of helplessness because you realize how little control you have over changing just about anything. When you couple constant attention being paid to things that are terrible and the realization that nothing you do is ever really going to change it all that much, then you start to realize, okay, what good is it for me to know every single thing that's happening and yet not be able to change anything? So I decided to take action and here's what I did. I decided to take a total media fast or I'll call it a TMF. And this was between August 15th and the end of the month. So August 15th through August 31st, that's a total of 17 days. So for 17 days, I decided to say no to a lot of things that I had been saying yes to. I'll go through the list of all the things that I was saying no to. No social media, no podcast, nothing political, no discussing current events, no push notifications on my phone, and no YouTube. That is a lot of no, right? That's a lot of nothing. So I was doing nothing on social. What I did is I took social media completely off my phone. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all gone. Like the apps are gone. I un logged in, I signed out, however, I mean, I don't even know the passwords to most of these things because they're always logged in. So I logged completely out where I couldn't be on there at all. Now, the one exception I had to make was I have to post content from both of my businesses on my business pages. So what I did is I didn't scroll at all. I would just get on a desktop or a laptop. I would go straight to my page. I'd post the content. I would look at notifications to make sure I didn't miss any comments and that's it. Then I would just, I would get off. And so no social, no podcast. Now I will say the only content that I did allow myself was leadership and business and spiritual. So I could still listen to sermons. I could still listen to leadership and business content, but nothing about current events and nothing political. I even stopped discussing political content. I let my friends know. I'm like, hey, don't text me memes, even if they're funny, even if they're lighthearted, I really don't want to know what's going on. As crazy as that sounds, I need a break from all this. I really just don't want to know what's happening. And then I also took a break from YouTube because even if I was searching for a video that would be good, like a leadership or business or spiritual content, all of my suggested content would probably still be about current events and political and whatever else. And I just honestly didn't want to see it. I didn't want to see headlines. I didn't want to see thumbnails. I didn't want to see titles. So I took a complete break from all of that. Now you might be asking, okay, well then what did you do? Okay, because I still consumed some media during this time. It was just a very particular type of media. I allowed myself audiobooks given that they fit my criteria of leadership, business, or spiritual. I allowed myself music, which is amazing. I actually rediscovered music. It's been so long since I've enjoyed music, which sounds crazy, but when I would be at the gym or be anywhere, I would be listening to podcasts or content and not listening to music. So I rediscovered music. I also, of course, allowed myself spiritual content, like I read and listened to the Bible, sermons from pastors that I really love, and worship music. So that's all the media that I was allowed to consume for those 17 days. Now, I wanna tell you a few things that I learned from this process. Number one, the world kept turning, okay? Whether I knew what was happening or not, everything just kept happening. And every day there was a news cycle for 17 days. And every day I didn't know what was going on in the news cycle. For example, 
both the DNC and the RNC happen during my total media fast. I didn't even know they were going on. I was talking to my dad on the phone. He mentioned something about one of the speeches and I went, oh, are the conventions going on? I literally didn't know. And guess what? They went on and I didn't know about it and I didn't see it and everything turned out just fine. The world kept turning and I didn't need to see what was happening. The second thing is I had a much clearer mind. I was able to focus. I had mental clarity. There were times when I would go to the gym in the morning, I would listen to music or an audiobook. I would come home before the sun would rise, I would walk out onto my deck, I would look at the sun as it was rising, I would pray, I would listen to worship music, I would just sit in the silence and I actually enjoyed the moment free of all the mess coming into my ears about all the bad news that was happening. I actually just enjoyed the day with a clear mind. I can't tell you how valuable that was. Also, I was more productive. I would come down here to my office. I would have days where I would get so much done because I had nothing else to focus on, nothing else to think about, nothing else to text friends about and distract me from the work that I feel like is my life's work and so vitally important. I was also more present in the moment with my kids and with my family because I wasn't pumping in bad news, just constantly thinking about problems I couldn't solve. I was actually in the moment enjoying my life with my four little girls whose time that they're going to be young is so fleeting and so fast that pretty soon it's over and they're going to be adults. And if I miss these days focused on things that ultimately are here today and gone tomorrow, how tragic would that be? Like, I don't want my kids to grow up and look back and say, wow, uh, I missed the time when they were four or five and six because I was worried about whatever was happening that day that I can't even remember a week later. I was also happier and more hopeful about the future. I talked about that sense of helplessness with all this media coming in. When you're focused on developing yourself as a person spiritually, mentally, and physically, you actually have hope for the future because it's not dependent on whatever's happening in the day. It's dependent on eternal truths and it's dependent on the fact that you are bettering yourself as a person and not just subject to whatever terrible news is happening in a given day or week or whatever. It's an amazing thing that happened to me. I also discovered some incredible books. There's two, one called Essentialism and the other one is called Atomic Habits. These are books that I probably wouldn't have made time to read, but I did and I'm telling you they're life changing. I'm gonna revisit the content of those books on this channel because I really think they're incredibly helpful for what we're all trying to accomplish as we wanna become more efficient and better and more productive at our businesses and our lives. Those are two books that I will revisit for years to come and they wouldn't have happened. Like I probably wouldn't have invested the time in them had I been distracted with other things that don't really matter. I can't stress that enough. It would have done nothing for me and in this case, I read two amazing books that I really dug into and got a ton out of. So you might be asking, well, what did I miss? What's the downside of this? And honestly, what I missed is nothing that I can control. I missed a lot of things that yes, are important and have impact, but nothing that had I known about it in the moment, I could have affected any kind of change. The daily news cycle goes so fast. It used to be 24 hours and now I think it's more like six where a story comes into focus and then it's gone as soon as there's something else to focus on. So if you're focused just on those things and not on things that last and that make an impact and that make you a better, more productive person, at a certain point you're wasting your time and that's where I was. So those 17 days ended and I eased back into media. I started listening to a few podcasts here and there and I started getting back on YouTube and I put some social back on my phone. But I have drastically reduced the amount of time that I spend going through these platforms. For example, I almost never scroll Facebook anymore. Almost never. I don't have it on my phone to this day. And I have found that just that one thing of not going through my timeline has allowed me to waste a lot less time, to be a lot more in the moment and a lot more focused and a lot more intentional about the things that I want 
to focus on that are going to help me be the kind of person and man and father and husband that I want to be instead of just mindlessly scrolling Facebook to see just this infinite scroll of things and people and activities and whatever's going on that really don't do anything for me. I still have no push notifications on my phone. Nothing. I don't get news updates. I don't get any of that stuff. I completely abandoned Twitter. Twitter, the explore section is like a trash bag leakage mixed with dumpster fire mixed with, it's just, it's an awful, awful place. That's nothing but negative for the most part. So I just abandoned it. I don't care anymore about Twitter. And I'm on Instagram because I want to grow my influence there to be an influencer. (laughs) Not really. I'm just, I don't, but I am on Instagram because I find that it's just, there's not a whole lot of political stuff on Instagram. And so those are the modifications that I have made. And it's been amazing. And I'm not saying that this needs to be prescriptive for you. But is there something you could do for yourself that would help you take an intentional break from the things that cause you to be down or negative or feel a sense of hopelessness? And could you replace those things with things that are more life-giving, more productive, and give you a clearer, less cluttered mind? If that happens for you, then this would have been a success. I would love to keep the dialogue open. Let me know in the comments, have you had the same tension in your life about the things that you expose yourself to that you would love? to reduce. Maybe you've taken a fast from media. I want to know how it went. Let me know in the comments. And if you do take a media fast, I have something for you that will actually help to focus your thoughts and ideas on something that could actually be productive and help grow your business. It's my super simple guide to your first $500 online. You can find it at lanesebring.com slash super simple. It's a quick, simple, in the name, five or six step guide that helps you discover how to start making money from the the things that you know. It's the exact steps that I took to turn my businesses into enough revenue where I could leave my nine to five job and pursue entrepreneurship full time. It's a simple, straightforward guide that I want to put in your hands and it's totally free. LaneSebring.com slash super simple. And if you want more information on how to make something work in a passive income model, you can check out this playlist right here and I will see you in the next video.